for Prima Media's quality, Yamtabi Madiba, former Trillian CEO Musilo Motebu, discusses a book titled Uncaptured, the true account of the Nenegate slash Trillian whistleblower. Back in 2016, you exposed corruption involving Trillian Capital Management, ESCOM, and Transnet. Tell us more on what prompted you to take that bold decision to meet with former public protector Tulima Donzella. My goodness. I mean, that there's so many elements to that question. Um, first of all, it's the way I was raised. My mom has been my moral compass in my book, Uncaptured. In my acknowledgement, I call her my moral compass. So I had been at Trillion and Regiments for the first time I was there. It was from 2007 to 2010. Then I left them and went into uh, Transaction Capital and KPMG, and then they recalled me back in 2015. I'm a BCom accounting graduate. I did uh, an honors in corporate finance and investment. I I have half a master's. I finished the coursework. I haven't done the thesis like I think most people. But I was so apolitical. I read the business day. I read the financial mail. I knew who the Reserve Bank governor was and the finance minister. That's it. When I return to regiments and I'm told by Eric Wood that the president is going to fire Nzanzla Nene in October 2015, six weeks before Nenegate, when I am promoted to be CEO of Trillion Financial Advisory, and there are no contracts with ESCOM, with Denel, with SA Express, with SAA, with Transnet. Can I say all of these entities fall under one umbrella? The Department of Public Enterprises. Billions of rents were looted from all of these entities. And today, most of them, except Transnet, are either under business rescue or they need a bailout. Regiments worked and Trillion worked alongside McKenzie. So there was a facade of credibility because they were aligned to a international consultancy firm. But billions of rents were looted without contracts, without work being done, without any value. And anybody who asks me, there was value. Where's the value? Because today, every rent I make, a portion of it goes to tax and that tax goes to the bailouts. So there was no value. So you ask me, why did I go to the public protector when the Guptas were essentially running the show? The unit buildings became Saxon world. The, the former president abdicated his responsibilities and gave it to three foreign brothers who were in South Africa for less than three decades or even two decades. So I've loved Trillion. It's now 2016. I'm in Egypt with my former life partner, Vusi Mavimbela, who also was a struggle icon who went into exile after 76. So he too was astonished and devastated and disgusted by what their hard fought democracy had become. I was literally at Trillion for less than for three months and that's enough. That's all I had to see. I was in the boardroom with the Marcella Coco as, as much as he's denying me, like Peter, the, the Brian Malifes, Mark Paminski, uh, Siobonga Gama, Gary Peter, Petula Ramosibudi, the board members and executives of all these uh, entities. So I was in Egypt, knowing that Tuluma Donsela was finalizing her report of uh, state of capture, because if you recall, there were several complaints from WC Jonas who, who, who complained that he was offered 600 million rand um, and 600,000 rand in cash. Uh, if he would work with them, because Ntlantanena was not approving the um, nuclear deal, nor the SAA fleet renewal that uh, Dudu Mieni wanted. So I'm in Egypt, 
And I'm thinking somebody else is going to help Tuluma Donsen. Somebody else who's more powerful with bodyguards, a minister, somebody with political gravitas will. And so we go to Egypt and my former partner surprises me with a trip. And we go to Shal Al Sheikh, which is a peninsula, beautiful. Um, it, I was very surprised that I saw the wilderness where the, the children of Israel were freed from the enslavement of the pharaohs. I saw Mount Sinai where Moses got the Ten Commandments. I saw the descendant of the burning bush, the most holy place on earth where, the, where only God touched that descendant of, of the bush. And in the evening, it was so beautiful. And I asked them, the waiter, what, what ocean is this? He says, no, this is the Red Sea. I said, this is where my God parted the Red Sea. And I asked myself, with that spiritual enlightenment, Usilo, how is history going to remember you? And I was reminded by the words of Winston Churchill, the only thing necessary for evil to prevail is for good men, women to do nothing. And I asked myself, am I a good woman? So I had like the devil here and I had the angel here. They were fighting. And I said, I, I have to go back to South Africa. But also going back to my mother. I knew how powerful the Guptas were. They were essentially the president of the country. They were running, they were appointing ministers. They were reshuffling them because if, 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 if one minister, if one CEO did not do what they wanted, then we would get a, a, a midnight reshuffle. I knew the power they had. And my mother has always been, um, I mean, she's a, a social woman, educated economist, if you read in, in, in my book, uh, a diplomat, and uh, she, she got divorced in the 80s when it was very unfashionable and she was Roman Catholic, so it was very scandalous, but she did it anyway. So I said to myself, if I go back to South Africa and I expose that corruption and they kill me, or my lawyer had told me, because I had to get a legal opinion after leaving Trillion, he told me about my fiduciary responsibilities that I have, if I suspect corruption, it is a crime not to report it. So I said, if I'm a coward and, and do nothing, then I'm going to jail. And my mother would have to visit me in jail with tampons and contraband being my Chardonnay. So I asked myself, what is more dignified? My mother laying a reef on my coffin or my mother visiting me? and bringing me tampons. And it, I said to myself, it was more dignified for my mom to, to lay the wreath on my, um, on my coffin. And it, it's quite interesting that the legendary Zeke um, he taught my, my aunt, her name is Mamusilo, even though she's, Mamusilo means the mother of Mosilo, but she's not my mom. Um, We've become very good friends. Um, I, I bought him the book and carried it to Ohio in the US. And on Twitter, he said, um, reefs or tampons? Musilo chose the reef, good choice. So it was quite amazing that, and then everybody who knew the book, even the president, um, uh, I'm still waiting for him to give me a call. He's, he's, he sent me a message. He says, reefs or tampons? Wow, Musilo. <laughs> so it's amazing how, <laughs> that is the catchword of the book. But also, it was also a, safe, um, a sense of patriotism. And it was a sense of me saying, not in my name, this cannot continue. And talking about Eric Wood, can you please share with us some of the intolerance and abusive behavior you got from him, which led you to write him a letter? Initially, when we were at regiments, um, and, he, and he's the one who called me to return. 
we we got on well. He took me to all the meetings, hence that's why I knew everything. And when we when we moved to Trillion, things changed. Um, I was unable to make decisions as a CEO. I, I, there was a junior who who resigned, and I accepted her resignation. And instead, he decided to make her co CEO, and she was an analyst. And, she, and he took half my stuff and half my responsibilities and gave it to her because she was, as, as you saw in my book, she was Muhammad Boba's proxy. He asked me to, to do unlawful things, to send invoices without contracts. And when I refused, he, he, he would ask my juniors to do it. And there was just animosity. There was disdain. There was disrespect. There was humiliation and, and the relationship essentially broke down and I wrote him a letter and well, he didn't really respond in any meaningful way. And can you briefly tell us why when regiments were splitting, you chose to go with Eric to Trillion? At regiments, when I arrived, there was two faction. It was like NDZ and CR17. <laughs> and uh, yeah, regiments were split in that way. Everybody had their a particular leader. It was either Niven Pile or Eric Wood. Alito was the chairman, so he wasn't he wasn't in the office that much. Eric, as I said, he called me back. He's the one who gave me the 1.75 million rand, the half a million bonus, saying I'm moving from regiments, going to Trillion, I'm going to make you CEO. He's the one who gave me meaningful work. Um, like the 12 billion rand club loan that Trillion says they did, and they were paid 94 million. No, it was regiments. Uh, I'm still waiting for Sh Shamila Bitoy to for that criminal charge because that was just sending an invoice without any work. So essentially, he chose me, and Niven paid me no attention. So, and my salary. I mean, from. I mean, I will be very, very, very. Uh, I, I want to be very honest with people. I'm not an angel. Uh, my salary from KPMG was 1.3 million. This was now in June 2015. When I was CEO, and then uh, I joined regiments, it was 1.75 million and half a million rand sign on bonus. And then I got an 800,000 rand performance bonus. And then when I was CEO, it went to 2.3 million. So in one year, you can just do the maths. So I was also seduced by, first of all, the, the, the fact that I was a CEO and I was doing meaningful work. And I was, I was thinking that I was going to trans, transform the public sector. And of course, uh, everybody works for money. I left with three months with, without a job, but that money was, was, in, was a carrot, but my ethics and integrity said, I'm not gonna sell my soul for, this money. And for the first time in my life, I, I left a job without another job. And you were isolated and unemployed, faced a mountain of legal matters, and your money was slowly running out. So what gave you courage to continue fighting corruption? <laughs> I'm feisty. I'm like a dog with a bone. When, once, I, <laughs> when, once I decide to do something, I will finish it. I think I was a naive, and I think South Africans were naive. I thought I would go to the public protector, her report will come out, there'll be prosecutions, people will go to jail, I'll have a job and life will just continue as it is. But no, I was so naive. After that, my statement was leaked to the Sunday Times by my lawyers, Vertsmans, because I had taken them to the CCMA. So I know it wasn't Tulima Domsela because the statement that the Sunday Times had was the CCMA one. After that, I had nine criminal charges. The hawks were captured. The man called me and said Trillian had laid uh, criminal charges against me because of the political situation and the, how powerful they are politically and connected. He has to expedite my case. There's no, there's nothing, there's no grounding for the charges, but he's getting pressure from the NPA. I was unemployable. 
study, um, corporate essay, they are hypocrites. They are travesty. They, they, they write that integrity is part of their ethos and their DNA, it's not. What's important to them is connections and the bottom line, profit. I was unemployed for two years. I had a mountain of legal bills, 1.3 million. Nobody would help me except when PLAF came, the, the protection. PLAF is based in Paris. They, they support uh, Julian Assange and Ed, Edward Snowden. Um, there was an article about me by Jessica Behosenhold, who was at the Mail and Guardian at the time, uh, because she saw that when you sue somebody, the court documents become public. And she saw that Trillian had the, the nine criminal charges against me, two labor court matters. And she said, what's going on? I said, no, that they, that's, that's our fight. Um, I've never gotten a single phone call saying we're going to assassinate you, but Trillian's um, strategy was to bleed me dry financially. Plaf opened their African office and I was their first African whistleblower. They negotiated my bill from 1.3 million uh, to 700,000 and they settled it and they still continue today. And today, I even on Twitter, I said, Verksmans must pay back that money. They were used. Um, I, I had to, before Plaf paid them the 700,000, I had paid them 360,000 rand for a CCMA matter. So all these entities from McKenzie to Worksman's to Bain, they need to pay reparations because they were used to abuse and victimize those people that stood up against corruption. And suddenly you were also labeled as Pravan Kodhan's puppet, not a whistleblower acting in good faith, also implicating your partner, Vusi Mavimbela. Can you tell us about the accusation of you being linked to Kodhan? You know, I've gone through so much. I get a call from Jessica Behosenholt again. I don't, I think she was now at the Daily Maverick. She had moved. She says, we just got an envelope. It has all your Google searches from Trillion. I'm thinking, okay, what was I Googling? <laughs> it has, when we were at the CCMA, Trillion, Trillion's lawyer said, no, they want us to settle. So they want my lawyers to write them a, a proposal. And we said, no. And then they asked again. And I said, okay, fine. So they had that. And then they, they wrote that um, I'm not a whistleblower. Fusuma Vimbela was the, Director General of the National Intelligence Agency. And he signed the Rogue Unit Memorandum. <laughs> and of course, Pravin Gordon and Ivan Pele um, are, are linked to the Rogue Unit. So I'm just a puppet of theirs and I'm not a genuine whistleblower. And that was the first time with all of this, even when, when, when the, 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 the hawks called me, I didn't cry. But then that was the first time I actually broke down because now Vusi has four kids with his previous uh, wife. And for the, I felt that my decision will cost him his livelihood as well. And then those four children they will not be able to eat and go to school. And yeah, uh, it was fake news. It didn't, it didn't, um, <laughs> it didn't stick. City Press got it. Uh, everybody got it and everybody called me and they're like, don't worry, dear. This is just fake news. They're trying to discredit you. It didn't stick, obviously. But of course, I also went to Pravin Gordon and to Luma Donzella. That's what people don't know, that I'm not just an renegade whistleblower. I'm the Pravin. Uh, Gordon whistleblower on the 16th of March, just three months after he was reappointed as a minister of finance, Deboho Levalo, the financial director of Trillion, told me that the president wants to remove Praveen Gordon as the finance minister. Obviously, it, it, it happened a year later, but 
when I went back to South Africa in September, I also went to Praveen and he sent his uh, special advisor, uh, Jean Ravelle. And I said, I suspect that the fraud charges that are imminent are, are related to the fact that the president wants to remove the, the finance minister because he's, he's not working with the Guptas to approve any of those deals. And thank God he didn't because we would have a trillion rand nuclear <laughs> uh, deal. And imagine, we don't even have money now for vaccines. So can you imagine where it would be if, Dan, if Desmond van Rooyen was not a weekend special? <laughs> and Advocate Jeff Badlender's report confirmed that what you told to Lima Denzel was true. So how did you feel learning that you were vindicated? I cried. I remember uh, the Sunday Times report saying the whistleblower was right. And I called Tokyo Sikhwale and I thanked him um, because it was because of that Sunday Times um, article, he initiated that investigation. And I initially was reluctant because I'm like, how does Trillion investigate Trillion? But I saw Jeff Badlander's profile. I think he, he, he was representing Black Sash with uh, I think the Sasa grants. And um, Bianca also told me that no, um, Trillion was actually resisting and not helping them at all. And they had appointed a lawyer to, to deal with Jeff. And I decided, no, let me go and speak to Jeff. I, I even had to fly myself to Cape Town, pay for my own accommodation because Trillian had just refused to pay him. So I was vindicated, but that it, it was tears of joy. I was like, I have been saying this. But what, what was so shameful was that at the time, ESCOM had paid trillion 300 and something million rand, but it could, the looting continued thereafter. And they were paid up to 700 million rand by 2018. And I had to now write an affidavit for ESCOM against trillion and, and write a confirmatory affidavit for Pakamani Hadebe, who was the CEO and the chairperson. So I had to write a confirmatory affidavit and write my own affidavit. And the high court pronounced that there was a corrupt relationship between Trillion and ESCOM. And they, they said um, the money was were paid unlawfully and Trillion had to pay back the money with interest. They, uh, Trillion took the, the matter to the appeal court in Bloemfontein the matter was not heard um, because there were no reasonable prospects of, of, uh, of success. And can you share with us your feelings at appearing in parliament to give testimony? And are you satisfied with the country's justice system when recalling what you have been through to save the country? Parliament. I was very happy that uh, the parliament uh, portfolio committee decided to, to do inquiry on ESCOM. We wrote several letters to them saying, I, I have evidence and they ignored us for a very long time. It was only when Bianca decided, Bianca Goodson, she was also as the CEO of Trillion Management Consulting. She, she was still unknown and she was very frustrated and she decided to give the information to Ama Bungani and Daily Maverick and also saying, we have written to parliament and they are ignoring us. Then all of a sudden they call us and say, oh my goodness, we've been looking for you for four months. But all of a sudden they found us. I was apprehensive. I mean, I cried all that way. Uh, that two hour flight cried. The night before cried. I think I had a bottle of wine for dinner. I didn't sleep. I was, I was just up watching CNN the whole night. I was with my lawyer. I, I applied to to give testimony in camera, which means you could hear my voice and not see my face. My lawyer was to the left of me, his associate to the right of me. 
I've never, I've never shaken like that in my life. As in, even my knees were shaking. I had four security guards, two in front and two at the back. Even when I had to go to the toilet, they had to escort me, go into the ladies, check there was no one there. And, and then I could, I could go and freshen up. I was disappointed at the report. I went to Zondo as well, twice in December, and I applaud uh, the deputy judge president. I mean, he's done a sterling job. Um, I believe because of the new regulations that now that evidence, the NPA can use it in uh, criminal uh, persecution. Our justice system is as good as the prosecutors and um, political will. That's why I think in the last 10 years, we've had so many changes in the head of the, the NPA because Zuma didn't want a, a ethical NPA head. He chose a, a, a Sean Abrahams to persecute us and the rogue unit and to leave Richard Mdruli and the, the, the Tosha Pandes alone. But now we can see I was very happy to see that finally there's an arrest on the Guptas, the two brothers, and the justice system has um, asked Interpol to assist them. But also I had to help the FBI as well with regards to, to the Guptas. And because of that, um, they, were, they were sanctioned off um, America's banks and their dealings. Uh, so I'm... Cautiously optimistic that the good the, the guys will go to jail, but I don't think all of them will go to jail. I hope that my and every other person who have, who has said no to corruption, uh, our 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 fight was not in vain because I feel that South Africa loves crooks. Nobody ever said hands off Mosilo when I had nine criminal charges. But when, when Ace Mahashula hands off Ace, Ace for president, and there's hundreds and thousands of people on the streets supporting him. And I'm asking, what, what does that say to this about the soul of this country? And lastly, what do you think needs to be done to address the safety and economic hazards around whistleblowing to ensure that no one else suffers as you did? Tabi, thank you so much for that question. Um, in my last chapter, when I went to the Zondo Commission in December and January, um, I told him we have to change legislation. Whistleblowers need to be protected legally. We should not be sued for telling the truth. There has to be reparations. In the US and the EU, they've got the best uh, whistleblower protection laws. They physically protect you. You are rewarded. Should you blow the whistle, you get anything between 10 and 30% of what the proceeds of crime, what you reported on. But the legislation also has to change because right now it's a, it's a labor law legislation. And it says your manager cannot suspend or fire you for blowing the whistle. But you fight on your own with your own lawyers and your manager has corporates uh, deep pockets. But also society also has to help us, NGOs and the lawyers. So we need a chapter nine institution, I think, because um, state capture was a, an industrial scale state sponsored corruption. It, it requires an institution like another chapter nine institution to essentially deal with the economic turmoil that uh, South Africa has endured, but also the legislation has to encourage people to come forward so that they know they'll be physically protected, their well-being and livelihood will not be ruined, and those who have stolen uh, will be accountable and then the justice system will take them to jail. So we need to sit down and, and, and essentially re restart a new legislation for whistleblowing because I, I didn't, I don't think South Africa, when they uh, drafted the Protected Disclosure Act, thought that there will be something called state capture. That was Musilo Motebu speaking to Criminal Media's Polity about Uncaptured.